my name is Mackenzie, and I run the blog otterbender.tumblr.com, and I got a request to make a tutorial on how I make my GIFs. So some assumptions I'm making are that you already have Photoshop. I'm going to be using CC. Um, you know how to use it, sort of. You have the episodes, and you know how to import the frames. And if you don't know how to do that yet, then there's already tons of tutorials, so I'm just going to get down to um, what my process looks like specifically. So, first things first, I import all these layers, right? Or frames, sorry. Then I delete the ones I'm not going to use. I'm not going to use that. I'm not going to use that. Okay, so I got them all there. Um, pay close attention. I am going to first convert it to a video timeline and then convert it into a smart object in that order. If you convert it into a smart object beforehand, like this, and then you try to make it into a video timeline after that, um, it will not move. Make sure you first convert it to a video timeline, which you can do by clicking this little tiny button down here, or by clicking this right here. I'm going to use this button. Um, so the nice thing about this is that it only has visible the layers that are actually frames in this animation. So I'm going to just delete hidden layers, and that'll get rid of all those layers that I don't want, um, and leave behind this little thing. Now I'm going to select all these layers with like a shift click thing and then I'm going to right click and convert to smart object it makes it all into one little bundle and uh, if you ever want to change anything inside of a smart object then you can always double click the thumbnail and that'll open it up and let you modify the contents um, so yeah and then you just save it and it'll um, bring it right back over here so I'm going to start by saying that I use uh, this actions feature of Photoshop to automate a lot of the functions that I do. Um, so, for example, um, when I the next step I'm going to do is making the adjustment layers to adjust colors and all that good stuff. Um, so I, y you could manually go over here and and choose, you know, I'm going to choose vibrance and whatever. But I've already set up an action, so I'm just going to play that action, and it just makes me some layers that I can work with here. I'm going to show you the, the order of layers that I do. Uh, adjustment layers, if you haven't used them before, they just adjust the images below them. Uh, generally, I like to sort of bring this up a little bit because... Er, there we go. Because it sort of gives it a softer look. Yeah, I start with curves. It's on the bottom layer. And, and order does matter because if I were to move this around, it would change the way that these look after I... I'll show you after I have um, adjusted everything. So now I'm going to do adjust color balance. I generally like to make the shadows a little bit bluish. Um, and as you can see, there's a greenish, yellowish tint to this shadow right now. So like, I can counteract that. Um, that makes it look a little more neutral. See there, it's more gray. Um, but I'm just going to go ahead and stylize it a little more. Um, that's fine. Oh wait, that was midtones. Whoops. Uh, so shadows is down here, and that's a totally different look. Yeah. Okay. So this is all just personal preference, and I mean, like, I'm just sort of I, after like making so many gifts, I just like learned like what I like and and know what to anticipate when I adjust certain things. So that's just sort of something you can't really teach. You just sort of learn as you go. So I've adjusted all of the the shadows, midtones, highlights, all that stuff. And I'm happy with that. So I'm going to move on to the next filter above, which is vibrance. Um, you can adjust vibrance and saturation separately. Uh, so I used to just adjust the saturation, but like that makes it look kind of ugly. So like if you adjust the vibrance, it adds some more color but without making it like, like look like a coloring book, you know, like, uh, so you can also combine the two and that sort of generally gives you a pretty good effect too. Hue slash saturation. If you really wanted to boost a specific color, then, for example, if I wanted to boost up Cora's shirt, which it's also picking up some of that macro for some reason, I don't know. And so, like, if you mess up on something like that, you can always um, just use this button down here when you're looking at these filter properties, and it'll reset the filter back to default. So I'm gonna make some more adjustments. I'm gonna you know, look at these different options. Um, I like 
the magenta and Sami's like tights and the sort of like looks kind of nice on the wall too. I don't know. Um, so selective color is a bit more of a subtle difference thing um, than hue slash saturation. In every color channel, you can adjust the yellow level, the magenta level, and the cyan level. So like, if for example, I'm like, oh, there's too much cyan in this red, uh, which is sort of a weird concept, but like I said, you know, you just sort of get used to the way that these things adjust as you learn more. Um, then I can just pull that out. Um, if I want a little more yellow in my yellow, um, or if I want a little more magenta in my yellow, then I can do that, and that obviously made it more magenta-y. Um, um, so, that's not working. Um, so yeah, you could just go in hypothetically and adjust all these different channels until you get the look that you like. You can adjust this black level too, and that'll change, uh, obviously, the black level. Um, if you change the, the black channel, if you adjust that too much, it can look kind of weird. So you want to be careful when you're adjusting that. I, if I were making this GIF for real, then I probably would spend a lot more time adjusting all these filters, but just for an example. So I'm going to select all these if I'm happy with the way that it looks and convert it to a smaller object. And like I said before, you can always just double click on the thumbnail and you can uh, come back and adjust these anytime if you're not happy. And then just save it and come back to this. So the way that I make my GIFs, like, so, so like a lot of times you'll see people who are new at GIF making will have this sort of artifact, kind of ugly colored noise. So the way that you can avoid this pretty easily is use, uh, go through filter, blur, surface blur. And these are some settings you want to adjust. This is like the, the sensitivity. If you, obviously if you raise it too high, then you run into a problem like that. Sometimes to combat that, I duplicate the layer and then I apply the surface blur to the layer on top. If I really want the threshold to be higher, but I don't want to have the transparency issues, this is dramatically changing the quality of the GIF right before your eyes. This is before and after. So like that just smooths everything out and makes it look much nicer and more consistent and yeah, it just looks really good in general. You want to avoid going too far with the surface blur because then it'll like just sort of everything will blend together like if you just do this yeah you don't want that you can modify it too much then like the background texture is gone like what happened you want to maintain the texture in the backgrounds but like make sure that you get rid of all that extra artifacts and noise and things so after you do that you can add in a smart sharpen filter um for a finishing touch and this is just sort of a per case basis, I guess. So you want to add on that. Uh, you can change the value. And, and if you're not happy with the um, way the filter looks, you can sort of like the way that you uh, can edit a the contents of a smart object, you can edit the filter at any time too. So if I wasn't happy with that, just like be mindful that like if you change the order of the filters, then it changes the, w the order that they are run in. So like it will change the appearance and like this one not very noticeable at all but on other gifts it could be a big difference you know. So just be aware of that. Keep in mind if you're not happy with this and you want to sort of like add on some more changes to the colors but you don't want you want them to be applied after the blur then you can convert this to a smart object is what I like to do and then add in some more adjustments on top of that. You can have a smart object inside of a smart object inside of a smart object inside of a smart object after you're happy with it, go to File, Export, Save for Web Legacy. This is a pretty big deal. You want to make sure that you're getting this right because this is ultimately what determines the quality of your GIF. In GIFs with a lot of motion, you can see the file size start to rack up. So the, it's a 3.4 megabyte size right now, and we can't have that because the size limit for Tumblr is 2 megabytes. Um, and so you want to give that sort of a wide berth so that you don't end up, because it's just an estimate too. You have a couple different options. So there's there's two types of dithering that I would advise, okay? So this is this is your menu for dithering. These are a lot of options and it gets kind of confusing, but just focus on the ones that are important and this is one of them. Dithering, you can choose diffusion or pattern. Don't go with noise, it's stupid. You can do pattern. Generally, uh, pattern is a safe bet, even though if you look in closer, you can see that there's like this, like, 
I mean, like I said, pattern. Uh, for different colors, they, they create different, like, patterns of pixels so that it will give the appearance when you zoom out that those are the colors. But you can still kind of see that it's not one color. Um, it's not as good as the diffusion option, but it is a good option, nonetheless. And for GIFs that on diffusion are too big, um, a lot of the time if you bring them on pattern, then though will uh, this is under the size limit. Um, you can also reduce the number of colors, but I don't typically do that. Unless there just like aren't that many different colors in the picture. Because quality can start to degrade pretty quickly. Um, 128 is still pretty safe. Never go below 128. Because um, then, yeah, it's just problematic. Don't do that. And you can do the same thing over here. Uh, and this, this diffusion has this dithering option. You can, hypothetically, you could, you know, remove the dithering altogether. But, like, dithering is what is basically blending between these different color types. So, like, if you add that in, it's like a nice little gradient. If you don't, then there's, like, color bands is what these are called. And that, that just looks pretty nasty. And that's what you'll see a lot of people's GIFs who are new to this look like. You want to avoid that. So, yeah. Dithering. Keep it at 100% generally. And by generally, I mean pretty much always. You can adjust the lossy up to, like, 10% without noticing any, like, huge quality issues. I mean, obviously the quality is noticeably worse. But, it dramatically reduces the file size. See, it's 3 megabytes right now. If I just bring the, the lossy up to 1, that's already reducing it to... 1.3. That's that's under our size limit too. So it's, it's not an ideal option, but if you're like not loving the way that the pattern option looks, um, then you can always do that. Otherwise, just leave everything else the same. Uh, I'm going to go with the pattern option for this gift. Just and this is just a preference, like I said. And uh, yeah, because I think that looks nice. Oh, I forgot one thing. Very important. Uh, you want to make sure that it loops forever. Let's just do metal bending. So it's going to export that file. We can go look over in this. So I'm looking at this file and it is greater than the file size that they said it was going to be, but it's still under 2 megabytes, so we should be fine. You can come on to Tumblr, obviously, and post your GIF, and there it is, looking beautiful. So one thing you'll notice is that like, w if you upload a GIF to Tumblr that is over 2 megabytes, basically what happens is if you try and post it, it looks it, it doesn't move. Uh, if it's under the file size, then it will move fine, everything's going to be perfect, everything is going to be great. Uh, so yeah, keep making GIFs. I, I had no idea what I was doing when I started out, and um, my first GIFs were really ugly. Oh, oh god. Oh, yeah, this was one of my first ones which was like really bad it's not it's not sized appropriately some of these gifts are over the size limit so I don't yeah exactly it doesn't even work when you pull it up to the full size so there's that whatever yeah so you can see I have this little black border I don't know why I didn't sharpen it at all this is not cute at all it just doesn't even look good I'm just embarrassed. I remember this one. I tried to gif like an entire scene, like in this one gif, and I so I had to like reduce the quality of a ton. Like you can see all this grain and noise and horrible nastiness. Like you just don't want to do that. You just want to gif one specific shot at a time, or maybe two, one or two, and that's it. This is like six. And, uh, as you can see, it didn't work out that well. So, yeah. What I'm trying to say is if, uh, I can go from this and, um, and get to here, which is just, like, look, 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 it looks a lot better, you know? If I can improve, then so can you. Good luck, keep making gifts, and, uh, yeah, thanks for watching.